Let's take a look at chapter one in the text, which deals with the systems analyst and information systems development. Note when we say information systems development, we are talking about large scale organizational information systems that are used by many people, 50 people, 100 people, perhaps usually across multiple departments and or divisions in an organization. In this chapter, we'll present five brief videos. This first one, which talks about the role of the systems analyst. A second one, looking at the systems development life cycle, sometimes called SDLC. A third video looking at project initiation, and project refers to information system development project. A fourth one, looking at systems requests, and a fifth one looking at feasibility analyses. Here are the learning objectives for this first chapter. The most important ones are the first several. Looking in some detail at the systems analyst role in information system development, this video in particular. Describing the basic system development lifecycle and its phases, that's also important and a recurrent theme in the entire course. Explain how organizations identify information system development projects and the importance of linking the information system to business needs. So first, let's begin by looking at the roles and skills of the systems analyst. The systems analyst is a, is a critical role and individual in any information systems development project. Um, these are some of the things he does, he or she does, analyzing the business situation, identifying uh, opportunities for improvement, and designing an information system to implement the improvements. But we can say quite a bit more that's not on these slides about what an in a systems analyst is and does. First of all, probably the most critical problem solved critical skill for a systems analyst is that of problem solving. The systems analyst must be a general problem solver. He or she must also understand the requirements, that is the business requirements, and should be able to convey that to the more technical people who write the code, design the databases, and so forth. You might think of a systems analyst as kind of a jack of all trades and a go-between between the sponsors and the ultimate users of an information system and the more technical people who actually develop the information system, the people who write the programs, write, write the files, the database design, implementation, that sort of thing. That is, they interact with the users, they understand the requirements, and they convey these requirements to the people who actually need to build the system. This is a vital role. So the systems analyst must communicate well and work well with people. Well, these next couple of slides are subjective in my opinion. Um, they, have to, they have to like working with people and they, a, a good systems analyst doesn't need to come out of the technical ranks, doesn't need to be a programmer or a database designer, but it certainly doesn't hurt if they are. Um, they, it gives them an enhanced sense of what, how to convey the requirements to those technical people that do this, but it is not a critical skill. And I should know, because I started my career many years ago as a systems analyst in a DOD contracting company outside of Washington, we built logistics and supply part information systems for the Department of Defense. And I had virtually no programming skills, virtually no database skills, and yet I did quite well as a systems analyst. And that experience helps helped me understand what it takes to be effective in that role. What they dislike about their work, well, that depends. It is a very good place to start a career in a technical field, and it's not 
industry specific. Systems analysts can operate in, in finance, banking, insurance, retail, government, consulting, just about anywhere where large-scale organizational information systems are developed. So in the next video, we'll look at what is the systems development life cycle in a bit of detail.